Michael Isikoff with a really great story at, on Yahoo. Uh, he's one of the best investigative reporters in the country. It's about what the Donald Trump wanted to do with sanctions. Now, there's what he says and there's what he actually does. So earlier he had said, I would not and have never even thought about taking them off, referring to sanctions on Russia. Somebody said Donald Trump wants to, I don't want to take them off. And that can't be any clearer, but he went on to say even more. He said, I would never take the sanctions off until something has worked out to our satisfaction and everybody's satisfaction in Syria and in Ukraine. I've made great deals, that's what I do. Why would I take sanctions off without getting anything? Well, Donald Trump, that is a great question. So now we go to Isikoff's story, where he explains that it turns out the Trump White House was looking to get rid of sanctions within days of Donald Trump entering the White House. So first go to Dan Fried, he's former chief US sanctions policy coordinator and he said, there was serious consideration by the White House to unilaterally rescind the sanctions. That's as soon as they stepped in. What happened? I thought you needed to make deals on Ukraine and Syria and you never even considered it. Turns out that wasn't true at all. Um, uh, here's more from Isikoff. He said in the first few weeks of the administration, he received several panicky calls from US government officials who told him they had been directed to develop a sanctions lifting package and imploring him, please, my God, can't you stop this? So guys who are already at the State Department, Trump comes in and he goes, yeah, I'm thinking of lifting the Russian sanctions. And they're like, what are you talking about? They might have meddled in our elections, and even if they didn't, we had sanctions on because of they annexed a part of the Ukraine, they just rolled their tanks in, and, and they don't agree with us on Syria, and they want to protect Assad. Why would we take the sanctions off? That's because he always had a deal with the Russians. It's so obvious, it's obvious in everything he's ever done. He put Wilbur Ross as Commerce Secretary, he used to run the Bank of Cyprus, where the Russians do their money laundering, where also Trump had some money. He took Rex Tillerson, who was the CEO of ExxonMobil. What were the sanctions on? On the ExxonMobil deal, and he made him the Secretary of State. Now we have reporting from the inside saying, no, the minute they came in, they wanted to lift the Russian sanctions. Um, Tom Malinowski, who had just stepped down as President Obama's Assistant Secretary of State for Human Rights, told Yahoo News, he too joined the effort to lobby Congress after learning from former colleagues that the administration was developing a plan to lift sanctions and possibly arrange a summit between Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin as part of an effort to achieve, quote, a grand bargain with Moscow. And here's his quote, it would have been a win-win for Moscow. So they were trying that from day one, and what happened? Well, at the G20 meeting, Putin and Trump went and had a, a two hour and 15 minute meeting where the deal was, uh, Trump says, hey, did you do that meddling? Putin says, no, Trump then says, okay, then we're done with it and we're not gonna investigate it any further and, and, and that's it. Uh, and so that's a win for Russia. Then he says on Syria, let's do a ceasefire. Well, Putin's like, my ally Assad is winning right now. We're gonna cement his lead, deal, that's a win for Russia. and. Uh, are you gonna challenge him on anything? Nothing, no, it's just a win-win for Russia. Hey, look at that, they executed the plan they had from day one to help Russia on every issue and most importantly get to lifting the sanctions. Now, these concerns led some department officials to also reach out to Malinowski, an Obama political appointee who had just stepped down. Malinowski said he, like Freed, called Cardin and other congressional allies, including aides to Senator John McCain and urged them to codify the sanctions effectively locking them in place before Trump could lift them. Now, I tell you that because <clears throat> look at all the effort that the, uh, that the State Department went to, to say this is a terrible idea to immediately lift sanctions on Russia, and it is not justified by anything. So they go to the uh, Congress and they tell Republicans and Democrats, they go, you gotta stop this guy, because he wants to lift the sanctions right away. And so you know the story is real because the senators did do that. Cardin and then Lindsey Graham, an ally of John McCain, introduced a bill to make sure the sanctions were not lifted. Now, six days later, Mike Flynn had to step down anyway. This was in the beginning of the administration because of his contacts with the Russians. So the bill didn't get fully executed. But you can tell by the fact that they proposed that bill that the State Department is telling the truth 
that Trump want to lift the sanctions on Russia immediately. Now guys, for the crowd who keeps saying there's no evidence, there's no evidence that they had any dealings with Russia at all. If Russia didn't help you win the election and there's no deal with the Russians, why would you get into office and on day one be like, "Oh, we gotta lift those sanctions for the Russians right away, right away, based on one, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Just lift the sanctions, whatever you do, lift the sanctions. Lizzie Graham at the time said, again, he's a Republican senator. Russia has done nothing to be rewarded with sanctions relief. Well, nothing that we know of, but apparently there's something the Trump administration knows about what they did for them that the rest of us are now beginning to find out. So did they have a deal with the Russians? This certainly seems to indicate so. Is it the smoking gun that locked all of them up? No, but is it evidence number 89 that yes, the Trump administration wanted to help the Russians for <laughs> apparently some favors they did to Trump? Because they certainly didn't do America any favors and none that anyone can see. Of course they had a deal. You have to be purposely blind to say, nope, 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 I don't see it. I don't see Rex Tillerson, I don't see Wilbur Ross, I don't see the server in Pennsylvania getting pinged by Alpha Bank from Russia nonstop. I, I don't see this, I don't see the secret meeting that Eric Prince had that we now know, Betsy DeVos's brother in Seashells Island with the Russians. I didn't, Mike Flynn meeting with the Russians, Donald Trump Jr. meeting with the Russians, Manafort and Jared Kushner meeting with the Russians. The Trump administration wanted to lift sanctions on day one. I don't see it, I don't see it, I don't see it. Okay, well then you're trying not to see it. It's super obvious. Now that doesn't mean that you are ready for criminal indictments. That's why you get somebody like Mueller who does an investigation, proves all of this out, and then tells us what he's got. And if he's got the evidence that backs up all of this that's already public, then you lock him up. So right now, there is all of the circumstantial evidence in the world that they had a deal. So now let's see if they have the evidence in papers, in numbers, in bank accounts to make that stick enough to remove a president. That's a much bigger bar. But was there collusion? Whether it rises to the level of a crime or not? You have to be ignoring the evidence to not see it. Obviously, there was collusion. If you like this video, you probably like independent media. The best way to support independent media, become a member of the Young Turks. TYTnetwork.com slash join.